Thanks for coming on, John. What about that last night? You, you, late on Friday, you scored the goal that gave us the victory. And then right at the start last night, how good was that? Well, first of all, I'm actually gutted with that travel news because it affects <laughs> me currently. Oh, dear. Uh, we're going to Ibrox to watch uh, my nephew play and I'm somehow going to have to avoid Dumbrecht Road. Um, but, yeah. no, it was brilliant. It was obviously a, a massive drought. Um, on the goal scoring front, front for me personally for, for Scotland and the form the team had been in over the past sort of 18 months was not great so uh, after the disappointment of no playing the game uh, it was important to try and stay professional uh, warm up as, as best as possible and then try and be ready when called upon so uh, I think it sums football up uh, that obviously I managed to get the goal on Friday night and then uh, on Monday three minutes in uh, get another one so delighted and at the end it was a little bit of an anti-climax because the celebrations for the boys on the bench made us think that we'd secured part one so uh, we're giving them a bit of stick at the end but the, the celebrations and uh, and the relief of getting that win was, was brilliant Andy, and we deserved it, didn't we? It's well, been... I'm just, uh, I'm always excited to see when John starts in the team. And I know you're not a, a striker, John, but you've got this tremendous goal scoring record. I do wonder if you ever dream of getting to a spot where you're the top scorer Scotland have ever had. I, I'm sure you're one of a number of players who could get to 100 caps or more. There's still a lot of football in you. I wonder if that ever crosses your mind. It does. I would be lying if I if I said it didn't. A couple of times I've mentioned uh, it doesn't matter who scores, which is absolutely right. But when you've got a target to hit um, and players that you could only kind of dream of being named beside um, to try and surpass, like even going past Dally McCoy's last night is is weird. It's a bit strange. Somebody who was a, a iconic figure for Scottish football and and a legend really so it is a bit surreal a bit mad uh, and hopefully I've got many years to come and try and get over over 30 goals because if I manage to do that it means the team's been successful and then hopefully Big McTominay can surpass me and then after that maybe <laughs> Ben or, or somebody like that I, I look so at I'll players uh, John like Luka Modric I think he's got more than 180 caps Ronaldo's got more than 200 um, Andy Robertson last night getting his 80th cap uh, I know you've got a good number as well. Even to get the the hundred caps is uh, is a bit special. Maybe even more. It's always been a, a name of mine. Uh, I think when you, you you take a bit of time to get in the the setup, you start to appreciate how hard it is to to get there. Then you want to stay. Then you target twenty five, fifty. You never think you're getting to seventy five. You you get close to that, and then you aim for a hundred. Absolutely. The same way we Robbo, we were speaking about it, how uh, you just kind of keep churning them out, you keep going there, but it's amazing. It's amazing to be up beside these, these legends of the game and hopefully one day uh, we can be successful at a major tournament and, uh, and you know, alongside those guys. So, and then get the first caps, uh, knowing, uh, knowing we've had that feeling, but then obviously to Right, them up. There's obviously players like Kenny McLean, who's, who's close to 50. Stuart, uh, just past 50. There's, there's a lot of players and a lot of experience in the squad now. We've got the Invincible, your big brother here. That's what we call him, John, the Invincible. Stephen McGinn. Stephen? He's in the car with my dad. John's oh. talking about um, the subs celebrating yeah. like yeah. they'd finished pot one. My dad celebrated, I think, like we won the Nations <laughs> League last yeah. night. <laughs> Some of sticks. How's dad feeling? <laughs> we know Stephen. <laughs> You, you, he's, too, he's, too scared to, he's too scared to speak <laughs> <laughs> Some of his old pupils will be listening in maybe it, It's phenomenal isn't it 20 goals you're not an out and out striker and the way we've turned it round for Scotland because you could tell the criticism Andy was saying earlier on but because we were on live just before the game on Friday yeah. night we couldn't believe you were on the bench uh, and that must have been you've said it yourself a disappointment but you used that as fuel I think John I, well, I think uh, all throughout my, my career you go through, I think most footballers, obviously the, there's people that are exceptions, you go through periods where you're not your best, uh, you're aware of that, you feel as if you can contribute a lot more, but you also feel in those moments you can still add something to the team, still do something in the game or use a bit of experience even in your 
worst moments that can help. So um, it was obviously disappointing, but like you said, fuel to to come on and try and make a difference. And I felt uh, for a while I wasn't at my best for Scotland, and there was still a bit of improvement in the last couple of games. But I felt a lot uh, back to myself a little bit more. And just before the international break, uh, I felt as if um, I was kind of finding that form for for Villa. And then uh, the gaffer at Villa decided I needed a wee. 40 minutes on the bench as well so yeah. uh, these setbacks you do get questioned you question yourself mm-hmm. at these moments and then you try and find some resilience in there to, to push through it so I feel in a good place now a wee bit of confidence back and, mm-hmm. and hopefully we're going to go for the next couple of months John give us a word about Stevie Clark because obviously we were so excited and enthusiastic about the Euros it didn't work out well for us Stevie Clark come under a bit of criticism in the, the opening games in this Nations League, but um, it's pretty clear that you and the rest of the, the, the squad are, are very much behind him. He's, he's still got a lot to offer. Uh, he's, he's brilliant. I think uh, the criticism he received, we felt it um, the same way. We were all getting criticised as, as individuals when we've managed to achieve what we achieved couple of major tournaments in a row after so long out uh, no one was getting away from how disappointing the summer was but we were all all behind the, the manager uh, we went through a spell with some crazy injuries uh, not only that we had to try and evolve as a team uh, come a little bit predictable uh, we had to formation and that those changes don't often show results right away uh, so it took us a bit of time We've managed to get some players back fit, and the exciting thing for us and for the manager moving forward, I think Ben this week and uh, Tommy Conway is probably giving him a wee bit of a boost to show that there is players coming to chap on the door, coming to provide competition for guys that have been there for years. We just need to get the others back fit. Uh, we've got players who uh, have had no luck with injuries: Aaron Hickey, Nathan Patterson, KT. Obviously, Lewis is uh, is coming back now for Bologna, so. The strength and depth is exciting and, and obviously the manager has a huge success uh, over the past couple of years for Scotland. We've all had a, a bit of a dip. Players, staff, everyone included and it's just been nice to kind of silence some of the critics uh, and try and push us on again. John, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's just so excited at seeing uh, Ben Doak play for Scotland. He, he gets you on the edge of your seat. I, I know he's not playing in the the Premier League in England he's on loan from Liverpool uh, at uh, Middlesbrough I've seen him there a couple of times and, and really enjoy his play he is he's something so different he's got this pace to burn and he can get even better he's a breath of fresh air to be honest he's something so different from what we, we have we've got a lot of talented midfield players but I don't think there's many in the team with such explosive pace but it's all uh, fine and well having that but you need to have that end product and I think going to Middlesbrough uh, has helped him evolve playing against uh, men week in week out rather than kind of fleeting appearances for, for Liverpool he's got a, an amazing sort of uh, ability to just block out everything that's going to I don't know if he means that or it's just his, his personality but He's happy to take the ball in any situation and like he said in an interview, he doesn't really focus on who he's up against. He believes in his own ability and I was actually surprised that he saw me at the edge of the box because I've trained with him a lot um, and there's obviously so much quality to his game but so much that he could improve on and that's certainly something that I hadn't seen him do before. If he can add things like that to his game then uh, I'm sure he'll deliver uh, on everyone's excitement. Let's face it, John, you couldn't miss <laughs> it, was on, it was on a plate. Do you know what? That's past experiences, the amount of times, uh, even for Villa in Scotland. Normally, when the ball comes back, I go near near side and it'll get blocked or, or something. But I just remember uh, being calm in that moment. Uh, and I didn't actually see where the keeper was, I just knew I was going the other side, thankfully. So it gone, so I was delighted. Great finish. Yeah. Final word, big brother. Of uh, Paul's. Try to take credit for the post Euro holiday when he met you. He was trying to claim the pep talk he gave you in the summer. Oh, me? Led to yeah, your yeah. return yeah. to, to goals. Yeah. So poor, thanks for coming on. Poor John, two days after the Hungary game, goes on holiday, quiet place, and I text Stephen saying, I think I've just seen 
John, I think I've just seen really John. Like. Oh, he hid for a couple of days. I was trying to hide. I don't blame him. <laughs> it succeeded. He missed a bottle of champagne that was ready, but no. John, <laughs> thanks so much for joining. That'll be, can you imagine tonight the people will see John McGinn at the game somewhere around the Ibrox area? How's the 